Good morning, beautiful. I haven't even combed my hair yet today. That doesn't actually mean anything. <laughs> it could be two o'clock here in the afternoon and I might not have combed my hair, but it is morning time. I have my a little bit of routine. I like to comb my hair in the outhouse. There is a fabulous, fabulous mirror. Why do I comb my hair in the outhouse? Uh, oh, it's because I, I won't lose my brush there. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the mirror, actually. Uh, yeah, if I put my brush down, if I don't comb my hair in the outhouse, <clears throat> where I'll like pick it up and put it right down two minutes later, I might never find my brush again. The beautiful mirror is just completely separate. Yeah, I look at myself once in the mirror a day. And that's it. I tell myself I love you. I think you're amazing. I think you're awesome. And all sorts of other I whisper sweet nothings into my into my eyeballs. And then I leave. I it's it's not uh cold here today. It's 14 in the house or that is 56 degrees Fahrenheit. But it's really chilly. It's a damp, so I wouldn't normally start a fire, but I just want to get rid of the dampness. So I thought I'd take you along today. I'll turn you around. So heating with wood is a whole thing. For one thing, you have constant chronic mess. There's wood chips throughout your whole house all the time. There's ashes all the time. The ashes fly around and <laughs> you have ash over everything. Uh, it's, you know, by the end of the season, it does get a little tiresome, but I would never ever trade and go back to electric heat again in my life. Uh, you need to have some basic tools. This is an ash bucket. Uh, hardwoods. No, oh, they're having them. They're actually starting to play. <laughs> they're actually starting to play more. So that's great. I see a tail there. <laughs> Hey, Foxy. Oh, are you playing with your brother? Yeah, good for you. Oh, I love you. Yeah, I know. Breakfast is a little late today. We're getting to it. We're getting to it. Uh, if you burn soft wood, which most people do because it's a lot cheaper, uh, you get a lot of ash. If you burn hardwood, you don't get nearly as much ash. So can't use plastic because in the middle of winter time um well i don't know how it'll be in this place but in my cabin uh there was always most days there was always um it always stayed warm this place i think i'll probably actually be able to let the fire die down a little bit so you have to figure out how to scoop out the ash when it's still hot and there's embers and I'm, I'm getting used to this stove and I haven't quite figured out how to uh, get it to burn all the way down. It usually, when I damper it off a little bit, it snuffs out the fire. So I'm just going to dig out some of the ash from around the, around the, the wood that's left in there. I like this. But it's a little bit small. It's a little bit too big for my ash bucket, and then the ash goes all over the place. And it wouldn't work today, anyways, because there's all this stuff in here. And the ash goes into the outhouse. It keeps the odors down. In the middle of winter time, I just go into the forest and I put the ash in the forest somewhere, because it's a lot of ash, and it doesn't all need to go into the outhouse. Fire starts better if there's not inches and inches of ash built up because then it just sort of uh, suffocates itself. Can't, the flame can't really get started. Oh yeah, see, I'm I'm not really paying attention. And look at all the look at all of this ash. You ought to be very gentle, like you're a brain surgeon when you're doing this. Just gently, gently put it into the ash bucket. I 
I'm gonna call this good for now, just for expediency's sake, not having to make you sit here and watch me get a lot of ash, a lot of ash out. All right. And then you gotta have different sizes. So that's gonna be, you always wanna have a, f a little bit of wood inside so it warms up. Um, I'm putting wood into the porch so it'll go from outside to the porch to in here. Um, I'll probably find another place inside to stash even more wood. Well, I'm gonna see how much wood I actually go through in the cabin. Oh man, I just went through so much freaking wood in the cabin. So this might be okay, this might, this, the bottom shelf it might last me a few days. I don't know. So you have, there you have like really big pieces of wood. You have smaller pieces of wood. Just round, that's not split. And then this is my like kindling. I find that the best way to start a fire is to actually pick this stuff off. This stuff catches really well. So before I make a fire, I just pick the stuff off of here and then I make a fire with that. So that is a system that I have found to work really well. Birch bark <clears throat> is phenomenal for starting fires. Uh, there's not a whole lot of birch on the property, but whenever I do find some down birch, um, I try to grab some bark, especially now in fall time and into winter time. Now, if you happen to be masculine, <laughs> And you start a fire with a blowtorch, which is, I think every partner I've been with has done that. Then just disregard, because this is not, this is not that. But, you know, one day we might not have blowtorches. We will actually have to figure out how to use matches again. So I'm ahead of the times as far as I'm concerned. Different people do it different ways and I this is a really big stove so I will be able to play around with it a little bit I guess. Outside I make a really small fire and then I put stuff, I slowly um, add stuff on top of it but uh, in a stove like this it usually works better to pile it in and then start a fire underneath it. So this is what I got from from the log I'm going to put into here now. So that's that's quite a bit. I don't use paper. I I find paper frustrating. stuff is really really dry so it should catch quite well. I'm gonna start the fire. I'm gonna set up the fire to be started underneath underneath it here. This is uh, pine and spruce. That's what most people burn around here because that's the most uh, widely abundant. And if you if you are not cutting on your own property, you need to buy a permit for specific areas, <clears throat> and the permits for birch and I think tamarack are higher. Birch permit is. I think quite a bit higher and it's just like I said not nearly as abundant so there's something special about birch I, I wouldn't want to just go cut down cords and cords of it I 
I find this method of making a fire to be quite quick, especially if you have the have the pieces pulled off before. And I'm talking here now, and I don't talk and do things very efficiently, so it would never take me this long to actually make a fire. Oh. Well, I snapped up the match. I find matches, using matches, easier than using a lighter. This wood is very dry, but it's been outside in um, the dampness. It hasn't been inside for all that long and that this place hasn't been very warm. So yes, I'm going to have a little bit of problems making the fire here today. If this wood had been inside for quite a few days or not had got, not gotten wet outside, it would already been flaming really well. Going on it gently can help. I don't want a big fire because it's going to get warm here today in the afternoon. So I don't want to pile this full. If I would pile this full, I would have a sauna, an absolute sauna in here. In the grand scheme of things, I haven't been heating with wood for that many years and there's still more to learn. I gotta get my chimney checked out yet, or my stove pipe checked out yet this fall. So if someone is coming to do that, I am not capable of climbing on the roof. There. And that, girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen, ancestors, stone people, standing tall ones, that is how you make a fire. And it's always nice when you're making a fire to do it mindfully and to thank fire to thank the air we need we need air to start the fire um to thank the the standing ones for providing heat when i cut wood this is not wood that i have cut but when i cut wood i talk to the trees that I'm going to be cutting down. I give a sacrifice. Um, I like to go, if it's a standing one, I like to go uh, look at the, the stump later and just put my hand, like actually like spend a couple of minutes just looking at the stump and like talking to it, like talking to the standing tall one and put my hand on the heartwood and have a conversation with it. 
Uh, they are very willing to provide heat for us. They don't have a problem with it at all. For me, uh, for, for me anyways, right? But I have a relationship. I have a relationship with them that I nurture every day. So yeah, here's some of the mess that I'm talking about. There's always this sort of stuff all over the floor. Starting a fire in the morning can be a ritual. It beco can become like a ritual. Then in the silence, you hear the crackling. You feel the warmth immediately. It's a beautiful, beautiful process. I always have a hatchet right next close by in case I need to split something a little bit. I After I split wood, I pick up all of these chunks. So this, oops, this works well to just sit here with a hatchet and split that a little bit. It doesn't cause damage to the floor. On top of the stove, I always have a pot of water. I use that for washing my hands and just to humidify the air because this is a drying heat. And I also have this, it's splattered with, uh, I had a leak in the cabin and uh, yeah, <laughs> it, that splatter from the leak on this by the stove pipe. Any hoozles. That this, the little fan just helps distribute the air, makes a bit of a difference. I do have a grate that I put in front of here. I won't now so that you guys can see it, but I do have a grate that I can put in front of there. The healing properties of fire are significant both to our physical bodies. We actually need this red light, the light that we first get at sunrise and sunset. That, um, that light hasn't been taken away from us, but our lights these days, our light bulbs, uh, they have been engineered to create disease and illness and also mentally emotionally sitting around a fire is very calming it's very soothing it's just like music it speaks all languages and it's a very comfortable warmth if you know what i mean it's very soothing
this is also another thing that is a must. A poker stick. I actually have a set. This was in the house here, but I have a set. The set comes with, it has four tools. Every set, it has a little shovel. It has, and they're all on, um, all on uh, hand, long handles like this, and then they hang right beside the fire. They're your wood stove. It's a shovel, a little uh, br uh, brush or broom, um, a poker thing, and then often there's like, like uh, something that you can pick a log up. I, I, the only thing I ever use is a. Uh, well, I use no. The only thing I don't use is that that thing that picks that picks logs up. I just don't know how to use it. I guess whatever. I'm gonna have to put a couple more small logs into the middle here because it's it is going to not burn very well the way it's going here right now. Oh, the fan just started. Thank you for joining me while I started the fire and nattered on about it. The munchkins have been patiently waiting for me to say the magic words. So before I say them, I love you. I actually slept a little bit last night, so I'm feeling much better today. And I'm just gonna take it easy and just putter around a little bit. All right, I'll turn you around now and say the magic words. Sam, Sam, are you hungry? Do you want some food? What do you think? Hap? Are you hungry? <laughs> Foxy? Where's the little girl? Foxy? What about you? Are you hungry? Oh. <laughs> you want some food? <laughs> All right, say hello. Say goodbye. Let's go get some food. See ya, everyone.